What's up, guys? Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Modern Goonies Podcast. I'm your host, Trevor King Miner, and in this episode, we're going to be doing things a little bit differently. We're starting a new side segment called The Weekly Charles, where me and my friend Charles will sit down and discuss bizarre news stories from the current or previous week. So, hello, Charles. How you doing, man? Why don't you give our audience a little taste of what that beautiful voice sounds like? Howdy. Beautiful. All right. So I recently disbanded from my previous roommates, and Charles and I have just moved in together in the last week. So for the next 14 months, or the period of our lease that we just signed, we plan to bring you uh, plenty of strange and sexually sexually charged content. So, all right, man, let's get going. So the first... I think I might disappoint on the sexually charged part. uh, I don't think you will. You never do. If Charles wants me, he can have me. Oh, God. Yeah, starting very sexually charged. I think it's the other way around. (laughs) Um, Okay, so my very first, uh, the very first news story that we got um, in light of the Thanksgiving, by the way, hope all of our listeners had a very happy Thanksgiving. I had a good time eating a shit ton of turkey, um, ham, you know, all that good shit. But uh, the very first news story is uh, titled, (laughs) All We Could Do Was Run, The Strange Story of Gerald, the Turkey Who Terrorized a City. Um, I have no fucking idea what this is about. Uh, their Oakland Rose Garden, the bird who dominated Oakland Rose Garden turned violent. The question of fate caused rifts that will never heal. <laughs> like the emu wars in Australia, but oh just my God. for California. Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, like many Oaklanders, 16, 16 year old Jojo Thompson had heard plenty of stories of Gerald, the feisty turkey harassing visitors in the city's, in the, in the city's Rose Garden. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. After seeing the agitated turkey closing in on some people nearby, Thompson and her friend took refuge behind a tree. Uh, but they they weren't but they weren't safe for long. Gerald soon had the teens in his sight. The bird began stalking them menacingly, <laughs> and then chased them up the hill and out of the park. Uh, she lost both of her shoes in the process. Uh, and then here we go. And then the, the quote of the fucking century is: "I had heard of his attacks, but I never thought it would happen to me. Oh All I could do was run." <laughs> this is like a fucking demon bird, man. Um, it, it looks like okay so it looks like this took on like some kind of it says it's, it took on a mythical status in parts of the city of California over the past six months stories reign of his terror in the otherwise tranquil spot first spread across town then sparked national and international headlines the, it, the reports were often similar Gerald would spot an unsuspecting victim from across the garden he would take off running either chasing them away or if they stood their ground mounting and scratching them until they fled he often targeted young and older people, those who could not quickly outrun him. He seemed particularly attracted to wheeled vehicles, including, unfortunately, baby strollers. Oh, my God. <laughs> so I'm reading where it says it can run at 25 miles an hour. I don't think anyone's outrunning him. It says, oh, yeah, it says it can run at 25 miles an hour and fly up to 55. Oh, my God. Um, wild turkeys have a 270 degree field of vision and can see three times more clearly than 2020, making it easy for Gerald to spot his victims from across the garden. Dude, this turkey is a super predator. That's fucking it's premeditated that's too. That's fucking hilarious. Um, yeah, so there's a bunch of, there's a bunch of other shit in here, but I mean, that's just, that's ridiculous, man. This turkey's fucking mean. Uh, another bold headline on here. This is not normal behavioral behavior. Carol, uh. So apparently he was once a uh, a calm turkey. He he wouldn't he wouldn't uh, he would just calmly stalk around the fountains of the garden. And then sometime in late 2019 or early 20, he uh, started to get fucking vicious. That only means one thing: someone really provoked this turkey. Yeah, someone. And he screwed yes. everyone. Who who hurt this turkey? Um, this turkey has trauma, dude. That's fucking hilarious. Let's see, is there anything else in here that's more interesting than that? It, uh, uh, another bold headline. Man, these people, these are dramatic ass, like bold statements. It tore the neighborhood apart. Uh, perhaps even more explosive with the conversation next door. <laughs> P- 
police have been called multiple times about this turkey. <laughs> you think at this point they would just get, you know, a game warden out there yeah. and just relocate this <laughs> well, turkey. Why do they just like let the turkey still run I mean, around? If this has been a problem since 2019, that's a whole year. You know, my dad was nearly killed by a turkey. That's awful. Not nearly killed, but uh, what happened? The dog was chasing it, or it was chasing the dog one way or another uh, out on our land. Which dog? Uh, we had an old uh, Great Pyrenees, the one oh. before Shelby. His name was Dusty. Apparently, he was chasing the turkey or whatever, and I guess the dog was running. So he, so my dad's like, what the hell? And he turns around, and his turkey nearly like clips his head, flying fucking. So if he can fly at 55 miles an hour, imagine that thing hitting you directly in the face. Yeah, your dad would have had a concussion. Yeah, so um, he avoided turkey death. All right, so that that's my interesting story. I don't even fucking know. Uh, all right, so there's a Save Gerald headline. I'm trying to see. Is there a happy ending to this story or no? This, okay, well, uh, I, asked this, I, I asked this question, and then the next headline is, the story is hardly over. Uh, Gerald's new home was a patch of wild land in the hills of Berkeley, owned by, the, by an electric company that had agreed to allow the turkey to live his days out in peace and quiet. Um, his retirement dreams, however, did not last long. According to the Department of Fish and Wildlife, Gerald found his way to the playground of a new park within a week. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, my shit. <laughs> It did say he like he particularly liked chasing after young people, young and old. So the staff called us because they recognized him from the news stories, said a spokesperson. Our law enforcement officers went and picked him up again and took him to another location. Gerald's story lives on with the local residents who fondly remember his legacy as the garden's top bird. In his absence, one person made an oil painting memorializing him. Um... Another writing a children's book inspired by his plight. As for the garden, it still isn't turkey-free. Um, Could you imagine trying to load a turkey in the back of your squad car? Dude, especially one that's fucking pissed like this one I know. is. I know. Can't hunt, handcuff it or anything. You know what? Good good for you, Gerald. Humanity is a shit stain. So uh, he, he had his priorities straight. He, he realized something in 2019 that changed his life for probably the better. Now he just keeps to get going, keep uh, going around and seeing Honestly, brand new locations. Honestly, I feel bad for this poor thing. And I think this something is, had to. Have I think happened. this is fucking hilarious. Something, some scum had to have messed with his turkey in a very scarring way for him to go from calm to vicious. Dude, this turkey is fighting back against Thanksgiving. That's what this is—the fucking Thanksgiving martyr turkey. That's what this is. All right, so Charles, why don't you why don't you load up your uh, your new. Uh, new store. You want to you want to pop up under the TV so I can take uh, a look too. Honestly, there's nothing really to uh, see, so I'll just and I don't want to cause the same issue we had right before we started. So I'm oh, just gonna yeah. read it. Okay, go ahead. So the headline to this story is "Hungover Woman's McDonald Meal uh, Raises Eyebrows When People See Her Receipt." This was in Canada. This woman ordered a burger late at night when she was very inebriated. From McDonald's and the burger she requested no regular bun, no mustard, no onions, no pickles, and no patty. So the the workers there <laughs> were like, "What's left?" So they handed her a container with two ketchup packets in it, <laughs> and they and charged her the whole price of the burger uh, because it's just what a obscure order. Can they do that? I so it, it happened. I, maybe she must have been an asshole or something for them to just load up to well, catch up. They actually found it absolutely hilarious when oh, they I, saw this. Well, yeah, I think and gladly was, paid. Like they just, it was actually a really good story to them. So did wait? So did she pay? Yeah. Like yes. She Every, paid? everything. Yeah. It's wild. This woman was blissed out of her fucking mind. But this actually, me being me, I started looking at this and I was like, huh, that's a little odd. There's Heinz ketchup packets inside the tin, like that little plastic container. I'm like, I thought McDonald's has their own version of ketchup. So I Googled the question. I said, what kind of ketchup does McDonald's use? And I found the answer on Quora from a former purchasing director in Latin America's McDonald's. And it told the tale of McDonald's ketchup. Good God. There's a fucking story for everything. All right. So... It basically says that McDonald's has had its own flavors of ketchup since the beginning, okay. or close to it. Um, when it originally was created, it was created by um, McCormick. And Heinz Ketchup, among several other ketchup suppliers, made this formula for him. Okay. But in uh, 1971, there was a tomato shortage. 
And Heinz looked at their percentage markup on products and realized that they weren't going to make that much money from McDonald's. So they told them that they would not produce their ketchup until the tomatoes were once again in ample supply. McDonald's had to scramble and find other plants to um, make their tomatoes and make their ketchup. And they, they were successful. And when the shortage was over, Heinz came back to McDonald's and McDonald's said, you left us hanging guys. Like we're not coming back to you. Huh? And, um, and started phasing it out in the late eighties. Um, like completely because there's, um, I guess like, uh, personally run McDonald's stores were still getting their, uh, ketchup from Heinz, but, uh, McDonald's basically said, you're going to use ours or you're not going to have like the brand or something like that. And you figured all of this shit out just, just from, they put Heinz ketchup packets in the thing and you're like, hang on, I want to know the story of McDonald's. I was very, very curious because I was like. I've never seen Heinz ketchup at McDonald's before. I was like, is this a Canada huh. thing? You know, or I've, what? Never even, I've never even thought about that. I, I don't even know what... I, well, I mean, I guess now I do know what kind of ketchup they use, but I never even thought about it. Um, so, like, one of the big differences is actually there's extra vinegar in Heinz uh, ketchup versus the McDonald's one. Um, da, 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 um, and then... McDonald's was like, re- or not McDonald's, Heinz was like really like adamant of trying to get their business back with McDonald's because that's like a huge market for ketchup right uh, there that right. they just yeah. billion dollar ketchup up. industry right there. And, um, and uh, da, 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 da. basically, and then in 2013, I didn't even know this, but like when the economy kind of like took a poo poo. In 2019, Heinz got bought out by, uh, like, an investment company. Who bought them out? Uh, I think it was, like, let me look it up again one more time. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to grab a beer. Okay. Uh, It was bought out by Berkshire Hathaway. Berkshire Hathaway? So Berkshire Hathaway owns Heinz Ketchup, basically. They bought them for $23.3 billion. Could you imagine the ketchup industry? Like, that's so much money. I don't even know. Does Heinz even make anything else besides ketchup? Uh, Yeah, they do. They make mustard and other condiments. Oh, yeah. yeah, Well, they just started doing mustard. Anyways. No, they've had mustard for a while. Okay. Well, they rebranded or something. Anyways. All right. Let's uh, let's dispel from the ketchup talk. (laughs) Anything anything else to this McDonald's ketchup Um, on a cardboard sandwich? I just... No, I just, I guess in Canada, you can get Heinz ketchup with your McDonald's. Wow, fuck you, Canada. Um, okay, wow, interesting. So the next story that I have, and I, this one this one isn't recent, so I don't even, I don't know when the hell this happened, but I want to, <laughs> I'm going to drop this into the, into the thing, uh, the queue. We, we got a TV, we just realized that we can airplay on this TV that we've been using all this time, and I've been using this HDMI cord, so this is so much easier. Just airdrop directly to this. Boom. All right. So here is the headline to this. Wisconsin trooper stops driver from hauling snowmobile atop car. <laughs> oh, There's rednecks in Wisconsin. Facts. I, I fucking... Well, yeah. Um, Wisconsin State Patrol had a uh, little advice for the guy who transported a snowmobile by strapping it to the roof of his Toyota Corolla. Out of all the vehicles. Jesus it Christ. It says... At the very end of that sentence, bad idea. Like, mm-hmm. like if anyone thought this was a good idea, they wanted to. The picture of this is fucking ridiculous, dude. It's literally as big as the car. I mean, props to him. He put it on sideways so he could still see out of his windshield. How the fuck do you even do this? Like, how do you get this mounted like that? I'm actually surprised that the roof of the Toyota <laughs> hasn't caved in. <laughs> I'm surprised they're not fucking dead. Like. Dude, holy shit. I have no idea. Um, he even had like a little flag to show that it's a wide load. <laughs> Did you see that? No. Wait, he does? Yeah, look at the front of the snowmobile. Oh, he should, oh my God. What the fuck is that going to do? <laughs> Warn the people. I guess. Hey, watch out for my snowmobile on top of my car. Uh, so, yeah, the 23-year-old driver was issued a warning about hauling the hauling technique you know, and cited for failing to buckle up. <laughs> 
you got fucking ticketed for not having his seatbelt on. Oh my god, <laughs> that's fucking hilarious. At least the trooper had a sense of humor. Yeah, that's true. Um, uh, the driver told the told the trooper that he had just bought the snowmobile and was driving it over to a friend's house to show him to show him that he bought a snowmobile. Okay, um, and he said, and I quote, "I know it looks sketchy, but we had strapped it down." Wait, what? I know it's not sketchy, but we'd strapped it down and shook it. He said, up like, what the fuck? Up like this kind of reason. Stuff, stuff, stuff like this gets seen all the time, but more like on the back roads. See, where he went wrong is he didn't tell the officer that he hit it and said, this baby ain't going nowhere. I don't know. Because if he would have heard that, he would have known that it was trapped um, good. Schmidt told a storm, storm trooper his vehicle had minnesota license plates because he had purchased the car in the twin cities last spring and hadn't gotten around to transferring the title is that it that's it that's the only resolution we get yeah so this motherfucker strapped an entire snowmobile sideways on top of his tiny ass toyota corolla and then got sight got a citation for not having a seatbelt on so there we go there's there's that that's some things that i noticed about this picture though there is not a single speck of snow in this picture at all it looks kind of yeah you're right and no, there is this no Polaris snow. snowmobile looks like it's more expensive than this Toyota could fucking, Corolla. Could you fucking imagine somebody just driving this like down the highway with no snow, just like sparks <laughs> everywhere, <laughs> just catch on fire? He causes the Wisconsin wildfire. Yeah. All right, so Charles, you're up next. Well, I think I've already told you about this story, but I when you told me to look up stories, I just had to Google the Florida man, and because they're always the best. And this is a heartwarming story. So this, it starts off kind of sketchy and bad. This poor puppy is r- walking around this pond in this uh, man's house. Uh-huh. And a smaller, younger alligator just throws its jaws around this puppy and starts dragging it into the pond. The man sees it, runs into the pond, mm-hmm. and pulls the alligator up to shore while trying to open his jaws, he successfully opens up the uh, alligator's jaws, and like you can hear this poor puppy in the video just screaming at the top of its lungs because it's in so much pain mm-hmm. and freaking out. And the good side of this story is the puppy successfully got away. Um, the puppy went to the vet afterwards, and there was only a let me see where it exactly said it. Da, 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 da. Uh, the guy said that prime the jaws open of an alligator was quote unquote extremely hard (laughs) (laughs) like you know it was just gonna be a walk on the park or something yeah uh there was only one puncture wound to the belly of the the poor little dog but um the dog has actually started to make a full recovery and it's gonna be completely okay so this thing was basically just gonna swallow this fucking this dog whole this god yeah and um it was a smaller puppy i mean no bigger than like a the, a big cat, you know. Mm. It was a pretty small puppy. It was a three month old puppy. Uh, the the man, the Florida man. Let me let me correct myself there. The Florida man. Oh, okay. We have to we have to reiterate that. Um, said his hands were quote chewed up, and he went to a doctor <laughs> to get a tetanus shot to make sure he, you know he didn't get no tetanus. And yeah, everybody's doing all right. And he hired someone to um, remove the alligator from his uh, property. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, well, what a, what a wholesome story. Yeah, no, that one's not funny. That one's just fucking sad. I mean, good, good for this guy. You know what that reminds me of, though? It reminds me of the guy who, like, fucking decked a kangaroo in the face for uh, fucking with his dog. Like, do you, do you remember that? Yes, I do. God, that was fucking and, hilarious. And, like, he had this scare down yeah. with a kangaroo. He, yeah, he literally, like, walked up, like, boxer style, punched the thing in the face, and it just was there, like, stunned. Like, I can't believe I just got decked in the face. Yeah, and that, that kangaroo was, like, holding his tongue, trying yeah, not to beat like, this guy. Uh, and then it also reminds me of that video that Michael sent us the other night of this guy driving on a back road, and, like, a kangaroo, like, kind of like hops into the road and then thinks about getting out of the way and turns and looks at the guy and Superman jumps and kicks through the guy's windshield. Oh yeah. Just fucking, and literally <laughs> obliterates it. Just 
is the witch? In- and then he just screams fucking kangaroo. Yeah, yeah he was like, ah, oh, Like, has this happened to him before? <laughs> or he's heard about I it? I think the caption of it was like, I love living in this fucking burning shithole was the t- title of that video. Well, surely it's different, man. Dude, it's fucking funny. Shout out to our Australian friends. Um, okay, so... Uh, last one here. How do I pop this up? Let's uh, let's airdrop this in again. And this is one that you you looked at before I did. Well, I guess I looked at before you did, but we both have heard of this story. Um, I haven't read too much into this. I read about this at work the other morning, and people are people have too much fucking time on their hands. That's all I can say. Okay, so strange metal objects are being found in the desert. So uh, for those who don't know, it's sort of like there's this one. Uh, like giant solid steel monolith that was found like random as fuck in some mountain range in Utah. Um, so yeah, over the course of just a few days, two strange objects were found in the southwest, in the desert southwest of the United States. One discovery happened in north central Arizona, according to reports. A large metal object fell from the sky in a remote area of I cannot fucking pronounce that. I don't know, fuck, whatever. Um, it crashed around midday on November 18th. Uh, <clears throat> I actually didn't read that there was one that fell from the sky. Yeah, Navajo Station did not receive the report, so they're checking in on it right now. No one was hurt. This was like a fucking satellite that just fell out of the Oh my god. Look at this fucking thing. Jesus. I didn't realize it was a satellite. It, it looks like it is. Um, it definitely looks. It oh, is yeah, no, a satellite. Yeah. Um, a police described it as a satellite, but this o- object was also attached to parachutes. Uh, unidentified object was released by employees to a company called uh, Polar Field Services. Not resp- uh, they, of course, they haven't responded to any inquiries. Yeah, so a fucking... Uh, speculation online is that this was attached to a high altitude weather balloon uh, that this company is known to use. Okay, so there's that. I mean, either way, this thing just fucking fell out of the sky and some guy saw it and was like, yo, what the fuck? But yeah, there it is. There's a little like orange parachutes on the end of it. Um, okay, and then the second one, so that was that was in Arizona and then a separate one here uh, in Utah, north somewhere in Utah, uh, people don't know what the fuck this one is. Highway, high, highway Patrol was recently assisting a bighorn sheep count. Huh. Okay. Uh, using one of its helicopters. odd thing to count. Yeah, I don't fucking know. Uh, they need use, the police's help for that. <laughs> um, using one of its helicopters. Uh, while flying, someone in the helicopter noticed something shiny was sticking out of the desert. The helicopter landed, and the people on and the people on board went to find out what it was. Uh, they found a large metal monolith sticking out of the hard desert ground. Um, indicate it appeared to have been buried into the sand and was sticking out a little over ten feet. This thing is fucking ten feet tall. Look at this thing. I wonder what metal they use because it, it's holding its age very well. Um, so for whatever reason, they are not disclosing the location of this object, and um, they have not even begun or attempted to speculate on its origin. So, yeah. So this reminds me. This is like one of those guys who is like from Utah, and then he watches a Space Odyssey, two thousand one, and he's like, "Yo, I'm a fucking recreate that because I live in Utah." And he runs out into the middle of fucking nowhere and just puts this thing up for no reason. There's no way he did it by himself. Like, there had to have been a giant orchestra of things because that thing has to weigh so much. Like, you would need a Ah. really heavy-duty truck to get it out there. I have no idea. Yeah, the the thing's fucking 10 feet tall. 10 feet tall out of solid metal? Yeah. Come on. That's a lot of weight. standing there. They say it's, like, buried in the sand, too, so it could be even fucking taller than 10 feet. Good Lord. Yeah. um, People have too much time on their hands, man. Like, Like, what's the... It's like an Easter egg in a video game. It's like, man, if someone finds this, this will be badass. Man, 2020 is wild. I don't Turns know. out a Space Odyssey is based on a true story. I don't know how I would feel about that. Yeah, okay. So, Charles, you said you had several stories. Is there any other ones that you wanted to talk about? No. No? No, okay. You, you decided to just completely nix those? Yeah, pretty much. They oh. weren't very interesting. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't, I didn't really look up... Uh, too many others. This was this was primarily it, but yeah. So this is this is interesting. So we had we had a uh, 
evil turkey. We had a woman who decided to order ketchup packets. Basically. Yeah. Uh, we had a snowmobile strapped to the top of a vehicle. We had... What was, what was the other one? Florida Man. Yeah, the Florida Man and his uh, prying the puppy from a fucking jaws of an alligator. And monoliths and satellites falling from the sky. So, cool. Badass. All right. Well, not too much more to talk about. We just kind of want to discuss it, discuss some weird news stories. So, we will be back next week with another segment of, you know, two to three, whatever, many news stories that we want to discuss. But, uh, you know, this has been the very first episode of the Weekly Charles. So, you know, a little side segment of the Modern Goodies podcast. So we hope you guys enjoy. We're trying to bring you as much content as possible now that we've gone to an audio-only audio format. So, uh, yeah, we will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Say bye, Charles. Bye. Oh, that sexy voice. <laughs>